Thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks for coming. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for coming. 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 Thank you guys. Thank you, man. You see me good. I'm glad I'm here as well. Yeah, good. To, hey, great to see you guys. Hey, great to see you guys. Glad you're here. Welcome to Comeback Boys of the Bible. How to get up from the knockdowns of life. And I'm glad you guys are here. And uh, of course, a lot of you guys I know, some I don't, but I'm glad you're here. But I'm especially glad you guys are here as well. And whoever you are, wherever you are. And of course, I don't know you, but I'm, I'm praying that. that uh, over these next few weeks, we're going to get to know each other, and God's going to do something good. Hey, I just uh, feel like I need to know to um, let you guys know, let you guys know for sure that uh, something about me, and this is obvious, you're going to notice this as I talk, but it's just a fact, but, but uh, I got to I, I tell you up here at the front that I, I am a stutterer. Now, all that really means is that um, I stutter, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't want to brag or anything, but actually, I'm a pretty good stutterer. I stutter really well. Now, now you stutter as a speaker-preacher guy, and of course, initially, it's, it's weird for you, the audience, because obviously, most, most preachers, most speakers don't stutter and, and, and don't do all the stuff I do, and you'll, you'll see. That, and it has to be weird for you, the audience. I mean, and, uh, especially for all you out there, it has to be weird for you. Uh, uh, you're sitting out there, and you just heard that your speaker for the next uh, 30 minutes now, and in the next uh, seven weeks is a... A stutterer, and you're you're thinking whatever you're thinking. You're feeling sorry for the guy. You're thinking, uh, why do we have to have the stutter? Whatever you're thinking, I don't know what you're thinking, but, but whatever you're thinking. But but let me set your minds at ease. In one sense, being a stutterer is uh, no big deal, uh, unless you want to say something. <laughs> and and obviously, it's going to be a factor. And all of my life has been a factor. I can honestly say if stuttering has done anything for me, it has definitely made my life exciting in that I never know in any situation I, I'm in if I'm going to be able to say something or not. And believe me, I've been in a thousand situations all of my life where I've had something to say, wanted to say it, and just had an exciting time trying to get it said. I mean, it, it affected me as a kid. I mean, I don't stutter as well as I used to stutter. But as a kid, I was a great stutter. In fact, I mix. <laughs> I may have stuttered as well as anybody has ever stuttered. I'm not, I'm not sure if they keep those kind of stats or not. But as, uh, uh, but, but as a kid, I couldn't talk. Couldn't say my name. Couldn't say hello to people. Couldn't, couldn't talk on the phone. In fact, I'd be at the house and our phone would ring when I was a little kid. And every once in a while, I tried to answer the phone. And I did this hundreds of times. I would get the receiver, pick it up, get stuck, start the stutter. Couldn't say anything. So I just hang up on them. And I, <laughs> I, 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 it, it, it uh, affected every area of my life as a kid. It affected me in school. I mean, I had hundreds of experiences in school. Just... Reading was a real challenge for me. Uh, speech class, when I got to junior high, that first class, that was a major adventure for me. Uh, Spanish class, now if you can imagine me stuttering English, <laughs> you should have heard me stuttering Spanish. It would be pretty impressive. But, but it's always affected my life. As a kid, it affected me as a student, and also as an athlete. Now, I didn't play football, and I happened to be a quarterback. Now, most of you know that normally a guy that plays at of that position, usually, um, you need to be able to talk. You gotta <laughs> call the plays in the huddle, you gotta say the huts of the line of scrimmage, you gotta change the play at the line of scrimmage. Of course, all that happens in highly stressful, time sensitive situations where for me, it was just, it, it was always exciting. Now, <laughs> in, in high school, all you're allowed, of course, I was, uh, when I was in high school, all you're allowed in the huddle to call a play and get everyone out the line of scrimmage to get the ball down, of course, for 25 seconds. That was all you got. Well, obviously, for me, 25 seconds, uh, just wasn't enough time to say all the stuff I had to say and stutter. So we were constantly having, having a situation that I'd be in the huddle, call on the play. I'd get stuck, start the stutter, 25 seconds runs out, referee throws the flag, and we lose five yards for the last game. So I'm costing us a lot of yardage. So my coach <laughs> devised a system whereby if I was on the field, I never had to say anything. And we did that in the huddle. We had a split in. He always stood right beside me in the huddle. His name was Steve Thomas. Steve called every play for me in the huddle. He'd say the formation, he'd say the play, he'd say the snap count, he'd say ready break. So essentially, I didn't have to do anything in the huddle because Steve said everything for me. In fact, my coach had said, Neil, you just be on a knee in the huddle and kind of act like you're doing something. But he said, he said don't open your mouth because it just confuses everybody. So, so Steve said everything for me in the huddle. We break the huddle, hustle up with the line of scrimmage. Once we reach the line of scrimmage, I had a fullback. He always lined up right behind me in the eye formation. His name was Stu Cropper. Stu would say all of the huts for me at the line of scrimmage. And it was so unique 
at the start of every ball game just to watch that initial reaction of the defense when <laughs> Stu would be saying those hunts. Of course, he's in his stance. You can't even see him, and I'd just be smiling on the center <laughs> guy. And of course, nobody knew uh, who was saying those huts and where those huts coming from. But I just want you to know that stuttering has always affected my life. It will uh, it'll be exciting in this series as well. But I just want you to know, hey, I stutter. I'm going to stutter. But know this. When I get stuck and start the stutter, wait a minute, because something is coming. <laughs> Here's what we're going to do. Come back, boys, to the Bible. You know, all through the Bible, the stories about men who God did great things in their life, but had something happen along the way, it was a knockdown. Either they caused it, or something happened to them, or just the world, the situation, something, but it knocked them down. But God did in their situation a whole new incredible thing that brought them back in an amazing comeback. You know, in, in some respects, a good knockdown is worth it if you have a great comeback. And what we're gonna do is look at some things in the lives of seven men. And we're going to see what God has done in their life, through their life, some awesome things. We're going to see what made them fall, what made them, them uh, trip up, what made them stumble a little bit. And then we're going to see where they were, how they got there, and then we're going to see what God did in their life, in this, and the end result, how God brings them back. Because ultimately, the gospel of Jesus Christ is all about coming back. Amen. From anything and from everything. That, and you know what the fact is? Every one of us has, has been there. Right. You know, every one of us. Well, these last years have been tough and um, tough situation, a tough economy, tough, all kinds of tough things. You know what? Men have been knocked down. But you know what? Our God wants to do a great and glorious thing in our lives and in your life. Here's the first one we're going to do today. Moses. Tough gig for the top dog. And Moses, of course, was that God, God uh, uh, was... Uh, uh, designed for him. <laughs> God's plan for his life was to be the deliverer of the nation of Israel out of Egypt. Uh, Israel were slaves in, in Egypt under Pharaoh. And, and God was going to do a great thing. He was the one who was going to lead the exodus. God had a great plan for his life. Man, I want you to know this. God's got a great plan for your life. He's got something he wants to do in you and through you that is far beyond anything you can think or even imagine.